this part is part two. It's how to draw contour lines. It's not so much how to draw them because you saw in the part one that I showed you how to draw them. This is more about how they're drawn and what they mean when you see the drawings. The rules for contour lines is we talked about this, that um, every point on a given contour line is of the exact same elevation. So anywhere that you see on this dark line right here, that is going to be an elevation of 100. I'm not sure if it's talking about kilometers or feet or miles or meters or whatever here. So we're just going to say 100. Now, number two, contour lines always separate points of higher elevation, which can be uphill, from points of lower elevation, which is downhill. One can determine which direction on the map is higher and which is lower relative to the contour line in question by checking the adjacent levels. So sometimes on these maps, on this one it's too small, you can see that this is 100. Because this 100 kind of makes a, a circle, this is going to be the highest point. And everything below this is going to be smaller. So contour lines always close to form an irregular circle. But sometimes part of the contour line extends beyond the map area so you cannot see the entire line. So that's another one of our rules, that the lines either make a circle or they're so big that the lines kind of have to go off the map. Whereas you can picture this, that if you were to make the map bigger, you would see that these lines kind of connect to each other and they would make a big circle. So number four, the elevation between any two adjacent contour lines on a topographic map is the contour interval. So it's basically saying that whatever these lines are going up by, that's your contour interval. So let's figure this one out. I have 300 here, I have 400 here, and it's separated by one, two, three, four, five lines. So I can try going up by tens. 310, 320, 330, 340, 350. Doesn't go up by tens, let's try 20. 320, 340, 360, 380, 400. So the contour interval for this map would be 20 uh, it's probably feet in this case. Usually it's written on there. Actually, no, it would be meters because this is kilometers. Because feet and kilometers don't go together. Meters and kilometers do. So often every fifth contour line is presented as a heavier line. That's these heavier lines that you see here. So that you can count by five times the contour interval. These heavier contour lines are known as index contours. So these darker lines are index contour lines, they're called. And they generally have elevations printed on them. So these darker lines are usually the ones who are going to help you because they do have the elevation printed with them. Now, whenever reporting the contour interval, it's important that the units are reported. So you would need to make sure that you wrote down meters for this case. You always have to include your units. Don't forget units. Rule number five, contour lines never cross one another except for one rare case where an overhanging cliff is present. And usually with overhanging cliffs, they'll um, present them to you as dashed lines. I don't think you'll ever see them in, um, you'll never see them with anything that we're going to do. Now, contour lines can merge to form a single contour line, and that's where there's a vertical cliff. And then number seven is not there. I fixed number seven. <laughs> contour lines never split. So the lines can get very close to each other and basically touch, and that turns into a vertical cliff, but they never um, split in half. All right, number eight, evenly spaced contour lines represent a uniform slope. Closely spaced contour lines indicate a steep slope and widely spaced contour lines indicate a gentle slope. So the spacing of the contour integrate, or indicates the gradient slope. So looking at this picture, what they're saying is, the closer these lines are together, the steeper it is. The farther these lines are away from each other, the more gradual it's gonna be. So if you're a lazy hiker and you don't like to hike up very steep things, you would want to hike up Rock Mountain over on this side. If you like steep surfaces or steep things to climb up, then you would want to climb up on the, this lake side over here because those contour lines are very close to each other. And number nine, a concentric series of closed contours represents a hill. So you can see that all of these contour lines, they go around and they connect 
and it's making a circle. When you have lots and lots of different circles building up on top of each other, that's going to be a hill or a mountain. Okay, so a depression is when it's going up, but then it comes back down again. Usually depressions have to do with a crater or a volcano, um, but how they're represented on a map is you see the increasing contour lines, but then they level out and these hash marks represent it going back down. So this could be, um, this is probably at the top of a volcano here, not a crater, because craters wouldn't have the depression marks over here. It would just be one circle. Okay, so to show when it goes up and dips back down, that's a depression. That's going to be represented by these hasher marks. Now, this is a rule, and this is one that always shows up on the Regents exam, that contour lines form a V pattern when crossing streams. The apex, so the point of the V, always points upstream. So this right here, what I'm showing you with my hands, that's pointing in the north direction. That means the river is flowing towards the south. So if you look at this picture, this picture is the same way. Those Vs are pointing upstream. So that means that the water is flowing downwards this way from X to Y. Because if you look, the elevation is higher up here. Energy flows from high to low. That's right. You got to remember that. So you have your higher elevation here, your lower elevation here, and then you're going to have the water flowing downwards. So the Vs point upstream. The contour lines, when they go across the river, the Vs point upstream. Vs point upstream. You got it? Good. Okay. And then, so these are examples. There we go. So these are examples of contour maps. You can see here you have these circles, those are going to be your hills. A ridge usually are elongated circles. Here is what a depression looks like on the map. You have the hasher marks, which shows that it's going back down. And then you have here, the Vs, those are pointing upstream. So really, this water is going in this direction. Okay, so Vs point upstream. Vs point upstream. Okay, valleys are usually wide open, spread out areas, and you're going to have cliffs when the ISO lines are closer together. The closer the ISO lines are together, the steeper it is. The farther they are away from each other, the more gradual it is. And then this is Turtle Island, which is obnoxiously hard to do. So that is the part two of contour lines.